A video making its way around the internet is advising motorists that at police DUI checkpoints like this one, motorists can simply communicate in writing. Uh, more than two million people have watched a video, a segment we just showed you there, uh, courtesy of the Associated Press and the Washington Post. It shows officers looking at motorists' information on a flyer held out their car window. The flyer says, quote, I remain silent. I want my lawyer. And of course, the suspicion is this is an attempt to get through DUI checkpoints without uh, getting a breathalyzer test. Uh, the person behind the whole notion of this kind of flyer joins us here at the anchor desk. He is attorney Warren Redlick, who is uh, sitting to my left, so that'll be screen right at home. And uh, Warren is here to talk about the genesis of this idea and to offer his point of view, Garrett Berman, the Florida Traffic Safety Resource Prosecutor. So, gentlemen, before it gets to court, we'll talk about it here in the Court of Public Opinion. Warren, you say innocent people get arrested for drunk driving all the time. This, this flyer, I guess the terminology is a chilling effect. And there it is right here for I our purposes. Prepared. You do, you have it prepared for us to check. Um, does it have a chilling effect on law enforcement? I hope so. Uh, the point of this, first of all, I don't think checkpoints should be done at all. I think they're un-American. But uh, the purpose of this is to protect innocent people from wrongful arrests, and they happen. Not every arrest is wrongful, but uh, this is a way for people to assert their constitutional rights in a way that's not confrontational with law enforcement. If you watch videos on YouTube, you'll see somebody saying, am I being detained? They might call a police officer names. This is just very directly saying I'm asserting my rights without being offensive. Counselor, let's show this to you. Garrett, what's, what's wrong with this notion? Um, well, I think there are a couple things that are wrong with, with this particular flyer. Um, starting with with the first uh, first sentence in red there, that please put any tickets under the windshield wiper. Um, basically, when an officer issues a citation by signing the citation, they are actually they are actually certifying that they have delivered the citation to the person. Um, it's going to be up to that individual officer to determine whether or not putting the the citation under the windshield wiper meets that certification, but it's the officer who makes that determination, not the driver who dictates how the citation is going to be served upon them. And of course, on the, uh, the back of the document, for use in Florida only. Uh, let me talk about that, Warren. A statute specific to the state of Florida, or conceivably, could something like this be used in every state in the Union? Uh, something like it could be used in every state in the Union, but every state has different laws. I've made them for several states. I'm, I'm, I'm a New York lawyer, too, so the first one I made was New York. Uh, but yes, no, they could absolutely be used for other states. But you wouldn't want to use this one because it refers to specific Florida laws. And if somebody in South Carolina was looking at it, they'd be like, what is he talking about? Yeah, you have the citation of Florida law on, on, these, uh, on these cards. How, how did the idea come to you? Uh, a bunch of things came up. The primary thing is I see so many people not handle checkpoints well, not handle traffic stops well. And I hear lawyers, I've heard some other uh, defense lawyers say that this isn't a good approach, but I haven't yet heard a defense lawyer offer what is a good approach. Um, there was a Supreme Court decision, Salinas versus Texas, which said that you have to affirmatively assert your right to remain silent, which to me is a catch-22. You have to say I'm remaining silent, so you have to not be silent to remain silent. So part of the purpose is you're saying I'm remaining silent while remaining silent. Um, you're saying I don't consent to searches. A lot of traffic stops, a police officer will say that the person consented to the search. Or when you roll down your window voluntarily, you're consenting to a search. This is saying you don't consent to searches. And we see the, uh, the card right there on a full screen. Uh, so, Garrett, again, is the concern principally this is to let inebriated drivers skate? Um, I, I think that's what some people might view it as. Um, I don't really necessarily believe that a person who's intoxicated is going to always remember to bring his uh, fair DUI flyer sign. Um, but there is that possibility. Um, the United States Supreme Courts have upheld the constitutionality of checkpoints. And they actually have upheld the officer requesting information from the individual, both questions as well as documentations. So the argument can be made that the driver does have to roll their window down, uh, that they do have to make contact with the officer. Whether or not they want to remain silent is up to them, but they still have to make that contact.
Okay, just well, to be, I just want to go and ahead. Unfortunately, time, but sure. we're going to bring you back because the fact that these uh, arguments raise many different contentious points. Gentlemen, stay with us. We will talk about this and continue the discussion with our two attorneys. It's almost like you can judge this at home to determine what should be the best course of action. Undergirding Western jurisprudence, the notion of, is this reasonable? Is it a reasonable approach in your mind? We'll continue this legal debate right after this time out on America's Forum. You remember flashcards from school to learn your multiplication tables? This is the equivalent of a legal flashcard for motorists to hand or to allow law enforcement to read. Uh, the attorney who is the mastermind behind this card is Warren Redlick. Uh, he is seated here. And uh, the Florida Traffic Safety Resource Prosecutor Garrett Berman has a different point of view of the card and uh, the reasons to use it or perhaps not use it. And Garrett is uh, here to my right, screen left. Uh, Warren, we heard Garrett make some citations of a Supreme Court finding, ruling. You were about to respond, but uh, the break got in the way. Your turn sure. to pick well, that he's up. He's correct that the Supreme Court ruled that they can conduct checkpoints. And it's pretty clear you have to stop for the checkpoint. There's no decision anywhere I've ever seen that says you're required to roll down your window. And there are plenty of decisions that say that the police can't search inside your car. And that minute where they force you to roll down your window is an intrusion in your Fourth Amendment. They're asking to go inside the car and they will typically say they smelled alcohol. There are cases involving dog sniffs where they allow the dog to sniff around the outside of the car. They don't let Sparky sniff inside the car. They only let Sparky sniff outside the car. So that's kind of the big issue there. What about that? Well, um... Actually, I, b I believe that's incorrect. The United States Supreme Court has ruled in one of the first fixed checkpoint cases ever in 1976, U.S. versus Martinez Fuertes. It was a fixed checkpoint dealing with the search for illegal aliens near borders. And what the Supreme Court said was that what was involved was a very minimal intrusion and all that was required was the driver lower their window, submit to a brief question or two, and possibly produce documentation that showed that they were here in the country legally. Now that case is actually cited by the other Supreme Court cases, Michigan uh, Department of State Police versus SITS, as well as the Florida Supreme Court case on checkpoints, which is uh, Jones versus State. There is also a more recent opinion by the fourth DCA here in Florida, Rinaldo versus State, which also talks about the need for the officers to make contact, get information and documentation. That would require that the driver or the motorist roll their window down. Now, he's correct in saying they cannot search the vehicle, but anything that is out in the open that the officers can then see is fair game. Uh, I don't know if this is a legal term or a term of art, reasonable suspicion. Doesn't a law enforcement official have the right, based on professional background and their own discernment of what is reasonable, to make an evaluation for a further search? Sure, well, let's be clear. In a checkpoint, if we're talking about checkpoints, there is no reasonable suspicion. Uh, that's different. If they pull you over for a traffic stop, they already had reasonable suspicion. So I don't think reasonable suspicion is the issue. The issue is when they want to force you to roll down your window. And all I'm trying to do, by the way, is to make that rolling down of the window not voluntary. So that when the police officer says, I'm ordering to roll, you, roll in, you, you to roll down your window, they may not be that polite, by the way. They may say it with more colorful language. When, if you've recorded this encounter and the police officer orders you to roll down your window, you've now created a Fourth Amendment issue that we can fight out in court as to whether the officer had a proper basis for forcing that window to be rolled down. If you, chose, if you roll down the window voluntarily, I've lost that argument as your defense lawyer. What, what about that notion, Garrett? Well, again, I, I'm, I go back to the case law. And the case law that goes all the way back to 76, dealing with the checkpoints, says that the officers that, that the officers may actually uh, require them to roll down the window because how are you going to get them to answer those questions uh, regarding either in Martinez Fuertes the illegality of whether they're here or not and as well as for um, in Rinaldo where the court basically stated that the motorists are obligated to uh, comply with an officer's reasonable requests at a valid roadblock and accept the minimal inconvenience and what we're talking about is very minimal and the officer has to make that contact. The purpose of the checkpoint is to detect and apprehend impaired drivers. And the officer cannot do that and is undermined 
by what this person's doing if they don't allow that. Can I ask a quick question? You got 20 seconds, unfortunately. Are you time. saying that I don't have the right to remain silent in a checkpoint? That is not what I'm saying. You have the right to remain silent, but you should still roll down your window. If you choose not to answer questions at that point, that's your prerogative. But I think you would still have to roll down your window. I chose not to answer questions and said so on my card. But you, you know, choose not to roll down the window. And one thing I can tell you, rolling down the window or not, I think this case will head back into the courts. We'll see what happens to Warren Redlick and Garrett Berman. Counselors to you both, our thanks, and we'll be back with more right after this.